She is one of Uganda's shining stars and Africa's gem. She is also the world's promising singer, songwriter, and musician. She has been termed the next big thing by BBC World Service during a 2008 talent search in which she was named one of the 20 best unsigned artists in the world. Her work is a complement of poetic verses dubbed with traditional African sounds and a dash of hip hop that gives her her music actually a hint of world music. This sultry singer goes by the name Chilla. Chilla, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. Let's start off with the name, yes. Chilla. <laughs> if you put a C H I L L E R, Ooh, it's okay. chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like okay. chilling, chilla. Chill, like yeah, chilling. Right. So now, Chilla, what, what, what does that mean? Um, Chilla is the name I got from my dad, um, who unfortunately I didn't get the, the time to spend uh, with to ask him, like, why did he name me that? Um, mm. But it's most likely from one of my grandparents on my father's side. That's all I know about my name. Okay, any oh. meaning behind it? Um, because I, I already termed it I just, chill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know that it's unique. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, when I sit down, I'm like, let me check on Google and see who else has this name. And it's quite unique. There are very few people called Chila out there. And the way it's spelled, T-S-H-I-L-A. If you're not careful, you probably say... Tishila uh, or something. Yes, something yeah, like a that. lot of people say that. <laughs> they go Tishila, but, um, you know, it's Chila. Okay. Yeah. And I was telling you before this interview is that uh, you're one of the first Ugandan musicians I've ever heard about or ha have met. You know, I've met quite a number of musicians across, and immediately I fell in love with how you look. I fell in love with your music. Thank you. And I said, Hmm, this is really world music. So you were born in Kampala. We just need to backtrack a little bit. Right. In June of 1983. How was it for you? And did you think you're going to end up doing this? No, uh, that's, a, that's an interesting story because um, I was raised in a family. I was raised by a single, a single mom, right. and she was very uh, strict on getting the sciences done. Like every and African mom. Yes, yeah. yes, and there was really no room or space uh, mentally for arts or for music, mm -hmm. and especially going through school, um, I was fostered, you know, to be a scientist. But I think I'm one of those lucky individuals that has a dual brain that I was I excelled at the sciences in school right. but at the same time I also excelled as an artist so um, but because of my love and passion for music and art and anything that's creative mm -hmm. I ended up picking you okay. know choosing so, to do that so you studied uh, software engineering right. here in the United States right and <laughs> that was when you started talking about these African causes right. while still studying yes. as part of a student body somewhere. Yes, yes. How did the music creep in? Well, um, I, um, you know, I did uh, software programming and I felt like, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. This is how I'm going to earn a living. But then at the same time, um, I was involved in a lot of... Um, uh, university like student body programs that were centered around um, Africa mm -hmm. and you know African identity and those things mm -hmm. really got into me and you don't really you, you don't really identify so much with being an African until you've left Africa and you've lived abroad and you really understand what it means to how Africa is portrayed internationally um, uh, what or what are the issues Africa is facing uh, many people in Africa have a different picture about life in the U.S., and people in the U.S. have a different picture about life 
in okay. Africa. True. So when I when I was done uh, studying, I thought, you know what? I'm so passionate about um, Africa. What's the best way in which I can like go around spreading a message about where I'm from? So and you that returned to Africa. Up, yes, and okay. I went back to Uganda, and I thought, okay, I sat down. I told my mom, you know, I know how passionate you really are mm -hmm. about me being a scientist, but I've always wanted to be a musician, and I wanted. I've always wanted to be an activist, actually. Right. So, uh, because I have I happen to have musical talent as well, I thought, well, you know, what better way That's to survive the than to, to, to channel than to, your messages? Exactly. Right. What better way to survive than to, you know, put both of the things that I'm passionate about together, right. and you know, and you know, perhaps if something I, good I, comes. I know out, you belong to a group called the Bataka Squad, right? Which actually was responsible. And it was uh, an international, it created an international buzz because the music was kind of like laced with hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I also know that whilst you were still in that group, you were part of the music in a, a, a documentary, The Diamonds in the Rough, mm -hmm. which premiered in Hollywood. How was your involvement then with this group and when did you decide to split and be on your own? Well, um, it's unfortunate, or um, it's unfortunate how it worked out with the group because we, I met them mm -hmm. right when they were like shifting their focus out of Uganda, right. and I was shifting my focus towards Uganda. Right. So um, it's our, our journeys were heading in different directions, but we were like passionate about exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we recorded an album together and uh, were part of that documentary that was narrated by Michael Franti mm -hmm. uh, called Diamonds in the Rough that gained a lot of, you know, uh, gained the group a lot of uh, notoriety worldwide mm -hmm. about um, hip hop and its influence on um, very poor, unfortunate um, children in third world mm -hmm. countries and giving them an outlet you know, a creative outlet for what they're going through. Okay. Now, you've experimented with a lot of traditional instruments. Right. And then you landed on the guitar, uh -huh. but which you play very well, by the way. <laughs> so what other instruments did you try to pick up before you say the guitar would be the well, first of all, let me say thanks for the compliment about playing guitar very well. I wouldn't, I don't, you know, usually feel the same way. I, f I just feel like artists it's, are normally it's, that it's, humble. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like it's it's something that I do. It's not really um, my main focus because I focus on the music and the message and you know my connection with the audience and you know putting myself out there. But um, I picked up African traditional instruments uh, back when I first uh, went to Uganda in around 2006, 2007. And I started uh, playing, I went to Senegal, I learned how to play Kora. I went um, to different villages within my country, uh, in Uganda, and I picked up um, thumb piano, the I mbira. picked up, yeah, <laughs> which you guys call mbira, right. yeah, right, from your country. Um, so I picked up, you know, the interest in knowing what is it that makes our music, the music from Africa, unique mm -hmm. to the world, and how can it be best represented as a global force of change? Okay, so your music has a tinge of hip hop, mm -hmm. and of course traditional influences. Right. What languages do you normally sing in? Um, well, I speak five languages, and I'm learning mm -hmm. a sixth language, but um, I mostly sing, of course, in English, um, and then in um, my favorite language to sing in is my mom's native language, which is called Lugisu. Lugisu. It's from uh, Eastern Uganda. Mm -hmm. And um, Luganda, which is the main language spoken in Uganda, mm -hmm. um, Swahili, which is also quite you know widely spoken, spoken in East Africa. East Africa. Yeah, and um, and also French, which is a language that I learned growing up. Okay. Um, with uh, my father being from Congo, that was you know somehow I think an influence oh, throughout okay. my. Oh, okay, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So now. You've performed in Europe, and we were telling me about your performances in Germany. Can right. you tell us briefly about these international performances? Well, um, in 2010, I was uh, sponsored by the Austrian Ministry of Culture to um, go around to small European villages performing mm -hmm. 
uh, my music as part of, um, I think it was also World Cup season at the time. Right. So um, I combined with a Brazilian singer Mm -hmm. uh, called Celia Mara. She plays guitar as well, and her music is very, you know, revolutional and stuff oh, like that. What a so, force. yeah, so we <laughs> <Combination>. were like, <laughs> yeah, we were like a female powerhouse, you know, right, for right. performing and going on tour. Um, and that's that, that was something that, you know, opened my eyes to how powerful music can how be. Many, how many people in the audience in Germany? Well, I um, performed in different places, but the, you know, the largest audience I performed for was pretty much like between 5,000 to 10,000 people. Oh, wow. And um, that was for the Africa Rise Foundation, which, mm -hmm. which belongs to a friend of mine called uh, Johnny Strange. He's part of one of the biggest groups in Germany called Culture Candela. Okay. So um, he, they had this big festival and um, yeah, those are some of some memories from 2010. Okay, so this yeah. is going to be your very first time to perform live in New York City, in right. the United States rather. Yeah. How are you feeling? Because you have a performance Saturday, which will be at uh, Adam Clayton Powell on, at the Shrine, which is quite a very popular African spot, okay. or in fact, spot where a lot of world music is performed. Ah. How do you feel about this performance? Well, I'm, uh, for one, I'm excited. I, I took a while. Um, it's been about two years since I last actually, you know, was out there with my music. So I'm very excited about, mm -hmm. you know, getting back out there. It's going to be my first performance in the U.S. So um, it's going to be a maiden experience for me. And mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to connecting with my fans, with the audience, with the people that are out there right. that see something in me. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to... Uh, reach out and grow my fan base here. Uh, so I'm very excited about it. Okay. Very. So if you had to tell some young girls out there who admire you, what would you tell them? Because maybe they've never even come close to a guitar, but they feel like they could play it. They could sing. They have ideas. What could you tell them to do? Well, if you're out there and you're watching this and you're, um, you aspire to be um, a musician or an artist or just to pick up the guitar or just to have your voice heard and you feel like you're voiceless but you want somebody to listen to you and what you have to say I'd, um, I'd say go for it because um, life's too short mm -hmm. and uh, you can't always let people dictate uh, what it is that that what what your power or impact is in this world so you're very powerful and you should not waste time. <laughs> right. um, get up, get out there, get your voice heard, and yeah, and the world will change because of it. Okay, so now you've been uh, in your music. You've 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 addressed various topics. What have they been? Have they been political, social, cultural? What what has been your message in your in your songs? Well, it's been across the board um, from uh, my biggest, uh, my biggest message in my music is, you know, has to do with female women empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that where I'm from, um, women are still struggling daily for equal, for mm -hmm. equal platform. I mean, women struggle everywhere, even in the United States. A lot of women are not... Um, achieving what they see themselves achieving because first of all they have to think of themselves as a woman then afterwards think of think of themselves as being successful right. um, so there's uh, there's that there's um, the social situation in in my country in Africa there's also I mean we all think about love sometimes right. so not um, Uganda sorry to cut you short we're running out of time because okay. we're gonna ask you to perform for us. <laughs> But anyway, Uganda just signed a bill where it's going to criminalize homosexuality. Right. And the world, the international Western world, has been up in arms. I mean, Nigeria has already done that. And I think a few countries are following suit. And Uganda was mm -hmm. actually the latest. Mm -hmm. Then we have South Africa that has always been the rainbow nation, as they call it. What do you feel, as a fellow Ugandan, that is this the fair thing? Because even to aid and abet, abet uh, you know, homosexual p 
people or practices, mm -hmm. you also will be criminalized for that. Right. Um, it's very sad. It was really a sad day indeed when um, we were told that Uganda was taking on this path. And I feel really, um, I, I, I feel personally that anything that takes away or lessens the human, you know, the human beings' mm -hmm. um, rights in the world is like going back you know, hundreds of years, it's regressing. We mm. should be moving forward and we should be thinking how to expand. Um, we should be more focused as a country on um, the economy, on the poverty, on, you know, on so many other issues that are um, putting people down, you know, rather than chasing after, hum you know, human beings, at, at, you know, at their own, um, who, who, who knows what people do. Right. You know, who knows what people do behind closed doors, um, whether they're uh, whatever sexual orientation, it shouldn't matter. You know, we should be focused as a country on going after people that are stealing money from a uh, stealing aid money, corrupt, you know, the corrupt people. Mm -hmm. We should be going after, you know, eliminating so many diseases that we still have, like malaria, AIDS. Um, we should be going after uh, creating uh, female empowerment. We should be going after education. There's so many things that we need to be focused on, and um, I feel really sad that this has to be one of the things that we have to be, you know, on the map for as a country. Right. Yeah. Anyway, sit on that note. Uh, we thank you very much for coming, and like you promised, you're going to play for us. So. Stay tuned and we'll be right this back. This song is a song called Kito Kidogo, which basically means um, something small. And it's an expression from where I'm from in East Africa, which means um, you've got to grease the wheel, which is part of our, um, it has become part of the mainstream culture that to get something done, you must offer something small, which is like a bribe or, um, a little bit of money or favor to get something done, which is not the way it should be. So I wrote this song about that and um, in the hope that it will help people change their mindset and help us progress to a better, more uh, productive way of being. I hope you like it. It's called Kitu Kidogo. <laughs> I could have never thought I'd find myself In such a crazy situation spinning out of control How could you ask for cash you didn't earn? Working hard is something you need to learn Oyakalanja ulo Oyakalanja ulo you do if you were in my shoes you make it hard by asking me to choose cause we both lose someone's got to stop this empty greed politicians playing mindless games while nations bleed something small Something small. Kitu kidogo, yakalanjaulo. Something small. Kitu kidogo, yakalanjaulo. Something. O yakalanjaulo. O yakalanjaulo. Mr. Man, I'm calling to you from the bowels of my existence. Only thing that's gonna get me through to you is my persistence to the justice. Money equals power equals X, Y, Z. In all dimensions, people hurting one is something to believe. When I talk about this stuff, I get emotionally unstable. I really wanna be hurt, so I take it to the turntable. African words have been spoken. No boundaries are yet to be broken. I have feathers that were plucked out one by one. No more could I soar, so I came undone. Satan in his time invented instant gratification. 
And now nobody cares for Africa's emancipation. For Africa's emancipation. For Africa's emancipation. When corruption gets inside your soul, mm, it's like a viral disease, and in your head you lose control. And the victims have no one to call. While those who steal from the poor get all the power not to fall. And do we have no care for those who mourn and weep? People are crying, children are dying. Can't you see it's the enemy? Oh, oh something small. Kituki doko, yakalanchaulo, something small. Kituki doko, yakalanchaulo, something small. Kituki doko, yakalanchaulo, something small.